Jonah, you are a hero for me too, of course, because uh, you uh, created the basically the only second physics engine for Bevy at this point. So I'm really excited to hear more information about your work on uh, XPBD. So I wrote it down so I don't mess up the order of the letters. The stage is yours. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so hello, I'm uh, Johan Alba. Uh, in the community, I go by Jundolf. And uh, today I'll be talking a bit about uh, st the state of physics in Bebe or specifically uh, what options we have right now and what we actually want from a physics engine, um, uh, what's missing currently and how we could, what we could do to perhaps uh, someday upstream uh, some physics library. And again, these uh, opinions are just my own and I'm just uh, sharing my own experiences and thoughts. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm a Finnish high school student, uh, for a few more months now. Um, I have roughly seven years of programming experience, mainly as a hobby, and I'm currently the maintainer of the Bevy XPBD physics engine, uh, which is the, probably the second most popular, uh, physics engine in the ecosystem. And I've also been contributing to Bevy uh, for the last few months. Yeah. So as you may know, uh, Bevy does not have official physics yet. So despite it being a core part of the majority of games, Bevy does not have an official solution for any physics or collision detection. And instead, it's left completely to third-party plugins like Bevy Rapier, uh, Bevy XPBD, which is my engine. And then uh, there's also Bevy Mod Physics, which is a little less, less known, but it's bindings for the physics, physics engine. And these engines can work really well as uh, third-party crates. Uh, there's nothing in particular that requires them to be a part of Bevy for them to function. But in my opinion, Bevy still does need official physics eventually. It's just uh, such a core part of game development, and it's just expected from a game engine uh, to contain physics. It would also help with maintenance, so it's not just on the shoulders of one person, in my case, or a few people. And also, we need the Bevy editor to uh, have a good physics integration. And of course, this can be done uh, by a third party credit as well, but it might be easier if it's first party. Uh, so I'll quickly cover you know, the general things that we want from a physics engine. Um, I'll fly through this since I have quite a lot of slides. So of course, we want it to be fully featured, rigid rigid body dynamics, collision detection, joints, ray casting, uh, shape casting, and continuous collision detection. These are like core features that I expect a physics engine to have. And then some nice to have things would be determinism and maybe some soft body and fluid simulation, but that's really difficult to do in real time. So yeah, probably not a high priority. Then we want it to be stable, of course. There should be no weird collision box or explosions or you know anything unexpected like that. It should just work like you would expect. Uh, like we don't want these random explosions. This is a screenshot from uh, when I had some more uh, contact stability issues in Bobby XPBD. And instead, we want this beautiful, stable uh, tower of cubes that doesn't fall over. Uh, then we, you know, this is an ECS based game engine. So you of course expect, expect it to be very fast. I'd say like over 10,000 dynamic bodies at 60 FPS would be a good target. And of course, tons of ray casts and shape casts as well. Uh, ideally we should uh, support as many <laughs> donuts as we can. Yeah. Um, 
for this, we need to perform broad phase. There's a lot of algorithms for that, uh, different algorithms. We need a performance solver. Uh, then there's the option of running on the GPU, uh, but that has the you know challenge of overhead when transferring data between the CPU and GPU. And it can also be difficult to integrate with the ECS well, uh, and in a user-friendly way. And often it just has high complexity and isn't really worth it. There's a great article on this uh, from the Pure Physics engine, Bepu Physics, not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, they went for a purely CPU-based, uh, highly optimized engine. Then uh, a core design philosophy of Bevy. A core design philosophy of Bevy is that we want it to be highly modular. So you should be able to freely, you know, plug and play. You should be able to replace parts of the engine. And I feel like this should extend to the physics engine as well. And the ECS is really good here, uh, since you can just schedule your systems anywhere and use plugins to uh, organize things. One example from WebXPBD is that you can simply disable the entire broad phase and make your own version of it. And another example, a more recent one, this isn't released yet, but you can uh, even replace the entire collision backend and make a completely a completely custom collider. Like if you wanted to make a collider based on assigned distance fields, then you could do that if you wanted to. And of course, Bevy also wants to be highly economic, so it should have an intuitive API that integrates well with the ECS and it should have good documentation. So it should use just basic components and resources for the API. It should be very minimal and it should avoid real defaults. And I really prioritize documenting both APIs and architecture well. I feel like the physics engine shouldn't be this mysterious black box that you don't know how it works. And I feel like it's really important to uh, document that side as well. And it also helps contribute to contribute this a lot. And yeah, the missing docs uh, class can be, I like it, yeah. So we have also have a lot of these very popular existing uh, engines that are very battle tested, like Box2D, Bullet, CSX, and Jolt. And a lot of people might wonder why we're not just using them in Bevy. Uh, well, first of all, we can just cross havoc from this list. It's very proprietary. I think it costs like thousands of dollars to even get access to it. So obviously not valid here. Um, and then Bevy has this design philosophy that it should be turtles all the way down. There's this saying uh, that it should be pure rust, uh, shouldn't have any translation layers or heavy translation layers. Ideally, engine code is game code. And it's really powerful since this makes code to definition work. So you can just you know, click on a component or a system or a function, and you can just go look at the source code and see how it actually works and what it does. And uh, since it's basically like game code, you, you're familiar you're familiar with it and can understand how it works. And yeah, this makes source code easier to inspect and contributions easier. So if we consider Rust to be a requirement, we're only really left with, you know, one engine, which is Rapier currently uh, from these engines. And then it also, in the case of Bevy, must work well with the ECS and we'll get into this a bit more. So right now we have the options. We can either make a wrapper around a physics engine uh, to integrate it with the ECS, or we can make a custom engine uh, using the ECS. So we have both options. The first one is Bevy Rapier, which is made by Dimforge, and is the wrapper. It's a wrapper over the Rapier physics engine, which is made in Rust. It's fully featured. It has rigid body dynamics, joints, spatial queries, character controller, and a lot more. Uh, it has an ECS-based public API. Uh, 
So it just uses components and resources for the most part. And uh, the implementation is that it uses a two-phase velocity solver. Um, if you're interested. Um, some pros are that it's performant, fully featured. It's uh, relatively mature, uh, quite ergonomic, and uh, it does have quite good documentation, although it is a bit outdated, uh, at least the website and the docs and docs RS aren't as good. Yeah. Uh, some cons are that it's just a wrapper and this requires an, a translation layer between the ECS and the you know, core physics engine. And this layer also makes the source code harder to inspect since there's this extra glue code, you could say. Uh, then it also uses Parry, which uses an algebra uh, math library, uh, while Bevy itself uses Glam. So ideally, we don't want uh, duplicate math dependencies. And uh, the Bevy version of this only, only supports F32 precision, even though Rabia itself has F64 support. So it looks like this, you probably uh, know already, but you add a physics plugin, you have to add these weird generics, I think. Um, and then you add a rigid body, you have to add a velocity component to it uh, for it to be queryable. Um, and then you can have this movement system that updates the linear velocity. So let's take a quick look at the architecture of Rapier itself. Not Bevy Rapier, but Rapier. So you don't have to worry too much about the folder structure here. It's just to show what there is. Um, at the core, there is a physics pipeline, which is what executes uh, the physics simulation. So it's this, you know, you give it basically everything. You give it all the you give it the broad phase, narrow phase, uh, you give it all the bodies you want to simulate, all the colliders, joints, you give it everything essentially. And you might see this uh, rigid body set and collider set. These are just uh, basically containers that contain all the rigid bodies in these data structures called arenas. And each rigid body is this huge struct uh, which has all the components in one place like this. So you can see that the uh, design is quite monolithic, basically. Like you give this one uh, function basically all of your state, and then your rigid bodies have all of their state in one place. And yeah. And then the way Bevy Rapier actually interfaces with this is that, well, um, uh, for the physics plugin, it has these systems that uh, you can see there's a lot of initialization systems and these uh, systems that apply user changes and then some write back systems. So uh, one example of an user change applying system is this. So it basically has uh, queries for like basically every component and it checks um, if it basically checks all physics components and if they changed, it uh, gets the corresponding uh, rigid body on the rapier side and updates the value. And then at the end of the frame, it writes the changes rapier made back to the ECS. So yeah, and then there's also this huge rapier contact resource, which contains the entire state of the simulation, like the narrow phase and broad phase and so on. So you can see that it's really is quite monolithic. It syncs all the data like this, and it contains the simulation data in these huge structs, which, which isn't inherently bad, but it's not how you know Bevy works and the ECS. So now we have Bevy XPBD, which is my engine, inspired by a tutorial series by Johan Helsing. It's built for Bevy with its ECS and has a highly modular plugin architecture. It has a ton, ton of features again, including F64 support. And it uses extended position based dynamics, uh, which is where the name comes from. 
some pros are that it's uh, built with the ECS purely. So it's just component systems and resources organized via plugins. And this makes it very much more understandable and quite ergonomic since it's just like the rest of Bevy. And I'd say it's also well documented, although it doesn't have a separate website. The docs are just on docs.rs. And in theory, uh, XPVD should be a very stable simulation method. But there can be bugs, of course, that <laughs> affects it. Uh, so some cons, it's still very young. Uh, 0 0.1 was released just over half a year ago, whereas Rapier has existed for years, and its predecessor in physics is even older. It's still missing some important features like joint motors and CCD, and it's not properly optimized yet, and it also uses parry like uh, Rapier does. Uh, here's the same example. It's mostly the same, except the plugin name is a bit different. It's actually a plugin group. Uh, you don't have to manually add velocity component and uh, linear velocity and angular velocity are split into separate components. Yeah. So the VXBVD's architecture is quite a lot simpler. Uh, here you can see the folder structure. There's just, you know, there's ju it's just plugins. There's a broad face plugin, narrow face plugin, integrated plugin, solver plugin, and so on. Everything is in these plugins. And the physics logic just uses raw systems like this. It's just normal systems. It queries for colliders and updates resources and whatnot. Here's another example. This solves constraints. It iterates through constraints and then it uh, solves them uh, by querying for the rigid bodies. And another benefit to this is that you can just, uh, you know, that it uh, it just uses these system sets and you can schedule your own systems relative to this. So in Rapier, you would have to use these hooks and they only hook in the specific parts of the engine, so you can't really freely change things around. And here you can see some of the components. So it's basically just components. So we have these two like good physics engines. So what's missing for official physics? Why haven't we adopted them? Uh, well, again, Bevy Rapier is built with isn't built with the ECS. Bevy XBBD is incomplete. And they both use Parry and the phone algebra. And we really don't want duplicate math rates because it's just rather confusing and adds some complexity and also adds to compile times and binary size and so on. So ideally, we need or we want GLAM based collision detection. Then there's the question of which solver to use a position based or velocity based approach, whether we want a separate physics world versus the ECS based. Physics world, um, both do have pros and cons. You can maybe do some specific optimizations if it's separate. Uh, then we have the issue of how to handle the 2D, 3D splits. Uh, currently, we have separate grades for this, like Web XPVD 2D and Web XPVD 3D. But we could also have a unified Web Physics that has separate components like Rigid Poly 2D and Rigid Poly 3D. Uh, so we need more experimentation to find find the best approaches. And I'll quickly go through some experiments that I've personally been doing and will continue to do. So first off, we have the glam based collision section. Uh, the goal is to use just Bevy math and the new geometric primitives, which are upcoming in 0 0.13. Look forward to those. Uh, it should support you know, the basic collision detection features like generating contact manifolds, ray casting, uh, shape casting, and creating complex collider shapes. And optionally, it could have also a plugin and components for Bevy. So option one is to you know, replace Parry with what I call Barry, which is a fork of Parry using Bevy math. So I, in theory, this would get give us fully featured collision detection with Bevy's own types uh, without reinventing the wheel. But this is still a lot of work since Be uh, Parry is really big and there's a lot, some things need to be re-implemented also. And yeah. And there's also the challenge of keeping it in sync with upstream Parry since the entire math library is different. different. So 
yeah, that might be a bit painful. Uh, my current progress is that I have managed to switch to mass library, but I haven't yet switched to Bevy's geometric primitives for the shapes, although I am trying to do that. The second option, which I'm also trying, is a collision detection library from scratch, uh, which I call Bevy Peck. There's a beautiful logo for it. Um, so everything is made with Bevy types. We have full freedom to experiment. And even if this doesn't become anything like good, it's still fun and a great learning experience uh, for me personally. But it is a massive undertaking to, you know, make Parry from scratch basically with, you know, fully custom made. Uh, my current progress is that I have basic JTK implementation mostly working and the expanding polytope algorithm mostly working as well and if we implement these properly then we have basically all we need uh, for contact generation and basic collision detection yeah uh, then alternative solvers quickly uh, there's a lot of options position-based impulse-based velocity-based or hybrid uh, recently Bevier API or Rapier actually implemented a small step solver which is kind of like what XPDD does with substepping which uh, improved the convergence a lot. And I feel like we should really experiment more and compare the different solvers. And ideally the solver is just a plugin that can be swapped. So like in Bevy XPBD, you could just you could just switch the XPBD to sequential impulses, for example, which I have tried doing already. And that uh, screenshot is actually using sequential impulses in Bevy XPBD. It has limited functionality and some instability, but in theory, the idea of a swappable solver seemed relatively viable. And then quickly, uh, 2D and 3D in one create. My idea is that there be separate components, kind of like in Godot uh, or Godot's nodes, uh, but some components could still be one component, like friction, since it's not dimension, dimension specific. And then we can use traits and generic plugins to uh, reuse code a lot. So to summarize, uh, Bevy will get an official physics engine eventually. The engine should be built in Rust and, and integrate well with the ECS, whatever that means. It can be done in different ways. But there is still work to be done and several open questions like we need, or at least heavily want, glam based collision detection. Uh, we need to figure out the 2D, 3D split and uh, which solver to use. And then there's the question of a separate physics world versus easy space physics world. And yeah, I hope that we can find some answers to this in, the, uh, in this year. And I will try my best to address uh, some of these issues. Uh, I think physics simulations are super interesting and rewarding. So I also would encourage others to try making their own engine. It's, you know, Bevy XBBD started just as a, you know, fun side project and eventually it became what it is today. So, you know, I encourage everyone to experiment with different things since it's really interesting and fun. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, Jonah. That's so impressive. How did you finish high school while doing this? That's amazing. Um, there's a bunch of questions. I would say let's start with uh, two or three like from the top and then open the panel discussion for everyone so that it's then uh, fair. So the highest voted question is actually what is necessary to make it fully deterministic? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, well, of course, we need to make sure that, um, you know, it's not query order dependent. Bevy can, or Bevy doesn't query, Bevy doesn't give guarantees that uh, entity query order is deterministic always. Um, so we need to make sure that it's not dependent on that. And if it is, then we need to maybe sort some uh, query results in some way. Um, and just in general, make sure that things aren't 
uh, order dependent. And this is a challenge if we do multi-threading because uh, you know that we can have a lot of parallel things happening and it's not guaranteed in which order those are happening. So yeah, it could move like it could move one body. Uh, mm. Like yeah. So it's not just an XPBD question, but also a very wide one. Okay. Yeah. And also and, tracking uh, determinism. Uh, yeah. Well, that is required for cross-platform determinism. Yeah. Um, how do you make sure this important project scales post post high school? Do you onboard co-maintainers? <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, I have my uh, matriculation exams in like a bit over a month, so I'll be quite inactive for a while. But uh, after April or after March, I think I'll be free for like five or six months straight, I think, uh, since I won't have any school or anything. So for that period, I'll be working quite heavily on uh, and other related things but uh, in university i'm not sure i guess mm. time will help but are you open for co-contributors making them uh, be able to contribute uh, like a maintainer at some point uh yeah i'd be open to maintainers i'm not sure right now who that would be but mm. yeah i'm already you know, people have made a lot of PRs already and stuff, but uh, yeah, I don't know who a co-maintainer would be right now, but yeah, I'd be open to it. Cool. So if there's anyone in the stream, uh, earn your reputation and then uh, there might be a chance. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, last specific question to you would be, um, would it be possible to add more documentation about testing with uh, XPBD? At the moment, it's not obvious how to run physics updates inside a bevy test. <laughs> That's very specific. I feel like this is referencing an issue in <laughs> repo, actually, I saw one, but I didn't respond uh, yet. But, uh, there's a few tests in the repo that show how to run tests. I'm not sure if it was something specific like running in fixed updates um i think there you might need to run some schedules manually or okay. something remember so exactly. probably best to refer to the issue then and uh, have that conversation yeah there. if it's related then, yeah yeah and then um tight ecs integration means also there is no public private api separation is that correct and how to how do you keep the user then from shooting themselves in the foot the foot um well uh well there's a few ways of course we can keep systems private where they you know we don't need to make systems all all systems public and then we can use uh system sets to give users places to add their systems in the schedule so like uh i could add like let's say uh, some physics sets first uh, system sets for example that wouldn't have any systems and then the user could add, add systems there so that they can you know run things before physics for example and we can extend that to like other parts of the engine like uh, one example is that we have a post process conditions schedule uh, which basically is just an empty schedule meant purely for adding your own system so that you can uh, do some post processing and collision data and stuff. So basically okay, just but... system sets and uh, schedules and mm -hmm. documents how they should be used. But we cannot really keep people from manipulating components, right? Uh, no, but yeah, we can't really stop that, but yeah, I'm not sure what the answer there is. It's good to have that flexibility, but I guess it can open the door to some foot guns as well. Mm. Yeah. 
uh, are you or do you plan to get in touch uh, with Foresight Corporation regarding Barry? Foresight is a strong actor in the Bevy ecosystem, and from my understanding, they are also related to Bevy, to Rapier. Uh, yeah, I don't plan on, uh, you know, contacting them necessarily. I'm not sure, you know, I don't think I need to really. I'm not sure what I would, I guess, help, you know, uh, migrating it to Bevy, but it's not. It's mostly just like manual work. Like it, there's not that much complexity to just switching the math types and stuff. It's mostly just someone has to do it, basically. Cool, Yona, another one about uh, inverse kinematics. Could you talk about that? What is needed to add this to Bevy? Um, yeah, I'm not really familiar with inverse kinematics. I feel like it's more of an animation thing, kind of, or not necessarily, I don't know. Um, okay. It's not, I'm not very familiar with it, so I wouldn't know, unfortunately. So this calls for contributors, I guess. <laughs> Jonah, is XPBD more suitable when doing rollback networking than Rapia or Rapia? Um, maybe. Gets good, can... Probably back to determinism again. Yeah, kind of. Um, neither Bevy XPBD or Bevy Rapia is entirely deterministic, at least cross-platform. Uh, but so if you want like if you want perfectly deterministic rollback uh, rollback networking then probably neither will be you know perfect for it but um with xpbd you can definitely uh, do a lot more things like custom and configure things a lot like you can run the schedule basically however you want and i have seen some people uh, make some custom schedule runners to do things like, you know, roll back some state and then run X amount of steps to uh, get back to the current state or whatever. So you can do quite a lot of configuration with the XPBD that I'm, you might not be able to do to the same extent in Bevy right here, but. Jonah, such impressive work to build this out of high school. Uh, is Rust your first language? Was it hard to ramp up? Um, so I actually started as a web developer by making this, you know, very bad website with the help of my brother. And I made like some snake game with JavaScript. Basically, I didn't code almost anything. <laughs> my brother did most of the work, but yeah, I started as a web developer and learned a lot of frameworks and some backend stuff. and. I think I started learning uh, Rust just like a few years ago, like maybe three or four years ago, probably. But yeah, it was different, but I like, I really liked learning it. It felt like uh, coming from JavaScript, it felt like cooler kind of <laughs> like, um, it's a lot lower level compared to something like JavaScript, of course. And I, or I did use like a bit of Kotlin and Python as well, but uh, using Rust was like, I really enjoyed learning it, even though it was a little difficult, I guess. But yeah, and I'm still learning, of course. There's, there are things that I haven't even used in Rust. Like I haven't done much like lower level memory management stuff since like, in Bevy, I don't need to do that, really. So, mm. yeah. 